Okay, so ready for the penguin? Ready for the guys, penguin? I want to welcome you all to the Hunter's Dad's Sea Life Sanctuary now. Out. Before we begin, is everybody enjoying themselves so far? Oh, yeah! Found somebody. <laughs> <laughs> My name's James, I work for the animal care team here and I'm going to be feeding our penguins but first I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. So these are Humboldt penguins and they are one of the most endangered species of penguin in the world with there only being about 10,000 or roughly 10,000 pairs left on the planet. They come from Chile and Peru, obviously where it's very, very warm. So uh, people who think that penguins only come from snowy or cold climates that's not the case. These are used to warm weather, obviously on a hot day like this, but our penguins were all born uh, in this country, so they used to the extremes of weather we get here anyway. So although they are a very endangered species, we're lucky enough to have two really good pairs. We have one solitary male. Our oldest pair is Charlie and Harvey. That's Harvey over there with the blue band, and Charlie with the yellow band over by the ball. And they're both in each year. I can't see. I can't see. Come on in. We also have Yoki and Jess over here with the green band. That's Jess there, who's looking very, very tatty at the moment. She's lost a lot of her feathers because they are actually molting. And these penguins actually molt a lot quicker than most birds. It will only take them about roughly a week to fully shed all of their feathers and then grow back new ones. So Jess over there is still currently molting. She's still got a little bit of feathers to, to go. Whereas Charlie over there hasn't started to molt yet, although she has, her feathers are looking very, very tatty. She's starting to puff herself out. So she shouldn't be too long now before she starts to move her feathers. But if you look at... Uh, Harvey, for example, he looks very, very clean and very smart because he's got, uh, he's got obviously his new feathers have already grown back. He was the first to start molting. So, Yopi and Jess are both recording, five years old, and last yeah. but not least, we've got Bo, who has the black band. He's also five years old, and he is our solitary male. So, he's the only one in here who doesn't have a partner. All of these penguins originally came to this uh, sanctuary in pairs, including Bo. But uh, they later found out that his girlfriend was another male, so <laughs> So uh, he's been on his own for a very long time now, but uh, he doesn't seem to mind, he's a bit of a swinging bachelor. But we do plan to get him a girlfriend eventually, but because of bird flu, it is hard to bring new birds into the, uh, into the enclosure and move them around. So we have to wait for the all clear first. That's why we have this netting overhead to keep all the pigeons and seagulls from coming in and posing a threat to our birds. It's not to stop the penguins from flying out because there are still people who think that uh, there are certain penguins that can fly, but that's not the case. They're all flightless birds, but uh, what they lack, what they lack in the terms of flying, they can actually make up for by being excellent swimmers. They can swim to speeds of about 16 miles per hour. They can dive to depth of about 25 meters and hold their breath for about two and a half minutes. And the feathers make them completely waterproof. They have about 70 feathers per every square inch of their body. And they uh, also have a special preen gland at the base of their tail. So when you see them running their beaks through their tail feathers, they're pressing their beaks against this gland. That produces the oil and they run it through their feathers using their beaks to keep them nice and clean and to make them completely waterproof. So one of the reasons that these birds are so endangered is one reason is sadly due to all of us humans. Now people like to go down to the beaches of Chile and Peru to see what the country has to offer and watching the penguins nest as a tourist attraction is very, very popular. Now that's not so bad but people get a little bit too careless and they get too close to the birds and they'll frighten them and they'll run to the safety of the sea. And as you can see on the land they're not the most graceful creatures on the planet. They are quite clumsy when they run. So they will end up crushing a lot of their eggs and sometimes stepping on and killing their chicks as well. Another problem that does face them is that the farmers of Chile and Peru have found out that penguin guano makes a very good fertiliser. Now guano is just a polite term for penguin poo or penguin droppings. Wonderfully demonstrated by Yopi there. And, uh, they actually use this guano to build their nests. It's very sticky, it's very handy for building nests. So if the farmers come along to harvest all of this guano, the penguins therefore won't have any to build their nests, they won't have any eggs, and so no chicks. There is another problem that does face them, but this is a natural problem. It's a, uh, a natural occurring phenomenon called the El Nino effect. And when this happens, it basically causes the Earth's air and sea currents to change, and that causes the penguins' main food source, such as fish, such as sardines and anchovies. A lot of these fish do die out, 
So the penguins don't have enough food, and a lot of them do starve, but that doesn't happen here. I've got plenty of fish for them, if they will let me get inside. Come on, give me some room. Come on. So we feed them herring here, but our recent herring delivery had some pretty big fish in it, so we do just cut the bellies off the herring to make it a bit easier for them to swallow. But if you watch, they'll easily swallow down a whole fish and it will start to digest within a matter of seconds in their bellies so they can eat more. A fish of about this size, they can roughly eat about six in a day. But I have learned in the past that it is pretty much a case of I feed them until they've had their fill. Although they're gathering around me now, as you can see, they don't seem that interested in it, so shouldn't be too long. It's the last feed of the day and they have been quite greedy, so I don't know how much they're going to have. Get out of here, Harvey. Not really hungry. Not really hungry. Not Where's the He's not very hungry. He's not very hungry. He's not very hungry, that one. Is he hot up there? Is he hot up there? Is he hot up there? Is he hot No, I don't seem too interested, so I might have to leave it at that, but I'll be uh, here for a little bit longer. So uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the penguins, please don't hesitate to ask, or anything else you see in the sanctuary for that matter, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. And any comments you can fill in a visitor survey form, you'll find those at the end of the shark tunnels on your way out. So you can please fill one of those in and tell us what you thought of the sanctuary, we'd like to hear them. So I thank you all for listening guys and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks very much.